Ask us. No, everything. Hello everyone. This is Asilesh from the Ask Us team. First of all, I would like to wish you all a very happy Independence Day. We all know that the independence India has obtained is due to the sacrifices of millions of freedom fighters and commoners. So to respect their sacrifice, this video of Ask Us is on Trist with Destiny, a historic speech delivered by Pandit Jawaharlal Lal Nehru. So let's begin. Trist with Destiny is a speech delivered by Pandit Jawaharlal Lal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, about the aspects that transcend India's history. Considered to be one of the greatest speeches of the 20th century, he delivered the same to the Indian Constituent Assembly in the Parliament at the midnight hours of 14th August 1947. On that eventful night, Jawaharlal Nehru addressed the nation in the following words. Long years ago, we made a gist with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A moment comes, which comes but rarely in history, when we step out from the old to new, when an age ends and when the soul of a nation long suppressed finds utterance. It is fitting at that, at this solemn moment, we take the pledge of dedication to the service of India and her people and the still larger cause of humanity. At the dawn of history, India started on her unending quest and trackless centuries are filled with her striving and the grandeur of her success and her failures. Through good and ill fortune alike, she has never lost sight of that quest or forgotten the ideals which gave her strength. We end today a period of ill fortune and India discovers herself again. The achievement we celebrate today is but a step, an opening of opportunity to the greater triumphs and achievements that await us. Are we brave enough and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge of the future? Freedom and power bring responsibility. Responsibility rests upon this assembly, a sovereign body representing the sovereign people of India. But before the birth of freedom, we have endured all the pains of labor and our hearts are heavy with the memory of this sorrow. Some of those pains continue even now. Nevertheless, the past is over and it is the future that beckons us now. That future is not of the ease or resting, but of in incessant striving so that we may fulfill the pledges we have so often taken and the one we shall take today. The service of India means the service of millions of people who suffer. It means the ending of poverty and ignorance and disease and inequality of opportunity. The ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye. That may be beyond us, but as long as there are tears and suffering, so long our work will not be over. And so we have to labor and to work and work hard to give reality to our dreams. Those dreams are for India, but they are also for the world. For all the nations and the people are too closely knit together today for any one of them to imagine that it can live apart. Peace has been said to be indivisible. So is freedom, so is prosperity now, and so also is dis disaster in this one world that can no longer be split into isolated fragments. For the people of India, whose represents, representatives we are, we make an appeal to join us with faith and confidence in this great adventure. This is no time for petty and destructive criticism, no time for ill will or blaming others. We have to build the noble mansion of free India where her child, children may dwell. The appointed day has come, the day appointed by destiny, and India stands forth again after long slumber and struggle, awake, vital, free and independent. The past clings on to us still in some measure and we have to do much before we redeem the pledges we have so often taken. Yet the turning point is past the, the, and history begins anew for us, the history which we shall live and act and others will write about. It is a fateful moment for us in India, for all Asia and for the world. A new star arises 
the star of freedom in the east a new hope comes into being a vision long cherished materializes may the star never set and that hope never be betrayed we rejoice in that freedom even though clouds surround us and many of our people are sorrow stricken and difficult problems encompass us but freedom brings responsibilities and burdens and we have to face them in the spirit of a free and disciplined people on this day our thoughts go to the architect of this freedom the father of our nation who embodying the spirit, the old spirit of india held up for the torch of freedom and lighted up the darkness that surrounded us we often we have often been unworthy unworthy followers of his and have strayed for his from his message but not only we but succeeding succeeding generations will remember this message and bear the imprint in their hearts of this great son of india magnificent in his faith and strength and courage and humility we shall never allow that torch of freedom to be blown out however high the wind or stormy the tempest our next thoughts must be of the unknown volunteers and soldiers of freedom who without praise or reward have served india unto death we think also of our brothers brothers and sisters who have been cut off from us by political boundaries and who unhappily cannot share present in the freedom that has come they are of us and will remain of us whatever may happen and we shall be shares in their good and ill fortune alike the future becomes to us whither do we go and sh- and what shall be our endeavor to bring freedom and opportunity to the common man to the peasants and workers of india to fight in end poverty and agrarians and disease to build a prosperous democratic and progressive nation and to create social economic and political institutions which will ensure justice and fulfillment of life to every man and woman we have hard work ahead there is no resting for any one of us till we redeem our pledge in full till we make all the people of india what destiny intended them to be we are the citizens of a great country on the verge of bold advance and we have to live up to that standard all of us to whatever religion we may belong are equally the children of india with equal rights privileges and obligations we cannot encourage communalism or ra- narrow mindedness for no nation can be great whose people are narrow in thought or in action to the nations and people of the world we send greetings and pledge ourselves to cooperate with them in further furthering peace freedom and democracy and to india our much loved motherland the ancient the eternal and the ever new we pay our reverent homage and we bind ourselves afresh to her servants jai hind this famous speech of the first prime minister of our country reflected the promises of our leaders from the constitu- constitution that would eliminate poverty disease ignorance and inequality which hampers the growth and progress of our country his speech marked the birth of an independent india of a free india which was suppressed for centuries and it was not only the oratory skills of pandit nehru that set this speech apart but also the nuance and eloquence with which he delivered the patriotic fervor and passionate struggle of the indian populace without restoring to egoism the hopes and aspirations of a long oppressed people were spoken through a way of steadfast optimism and cautious pragmatism if you found this video interesting please don't forget to give us a like and if you want to see more interesting videos like this please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and if you want us to speak on your favorite topic so don't hesitate put it in the comments below stay home stay safe thank you